Number 10. Crabzilla. I wanted to start by talking about what appears to be an enormous crustacean lurking in the water near the seaside town of Whitstable in England. This giant crab appears to be relaxing at the harbour, and as you can see by the Google Earth evidence, the thing is massive. Judging by the image from Google Earth, this ridiculously huge crab must be about 50 feet wide. It's over twice the size of some of the nearby fishing boats. And people may doubt the authenticity of Google Earth's photos, but there is no mistaking this for an enormous crab. It's hard to imagine that it could be anything else. Nicknamed Crabzilla, this crustacean looks exactly like a species of crab commonly found in the waters around the British Isles. And while an ordinary crab grows to be about 5 inches, this one is definitely 50 feet. But what is it doing there? Could it be a mutated crab that grew to be 50 times its normal size? According to the Daily Express, one eyewitness claims that he even spotted the giant creature close to the shore between 2013 and 2014. Supposedly, the creature has black eyes on creepy eye stalks and massive claws that could crush a man in one strike. But of course, this is just speculation. Number 9. The Kraken There has been a very heated debate over an image captured on Google Earth near Antarctica. The image appears to be of a sea monster very much like the legendary Kraken that sailors feared hundreds of years ago. However, many people are saying it's just a rock. In fact, it even has a name, Sail Rock, and the coordinates are quite easy to locate. It's just north of the Antarctica mainland and slightly south from Deception Island. That's a pretty appropriate name considering the circumstances. But despite most scientific claims that it is just a rock, it still looks like a mythical beast. And the truth is that maybe we'll never know if it truly is the rock that everybody says it is, or if it was a mythical monster of legend thrashing in the ocean. Now, I don't want anyone to sail down there to check it out and be disappointed, so keep in mind that it is almost certainly not alive, and the ocean near Antarctica is cold and dangerous. But the history of this rock is strange. The alleged sail rock actually got its name because of 19th century travellers, who also mistook the rock for something that it wasn't. These old explorers thought that the rock was actually a ship. But no, it was just a rock. And now the same thing is happening in modern times. Rock, ship, or monster, you be the judge. Number 8. Loch Ness Monster It would appear that the extremely elusive Loch Ness Monster, the horrible beast hiding in the Loch Ness in northern Scotland for hundreds of years, has been discovered by an American woman from Bellevue, Ohio. Pretty strange, but this lady used Google Earth after being laid off of work to capture the monster once and for all. This is pretty incredible. Believe what you want about the image she's uncovered from using the street view of Google Earth, but Lisa Stout got closer to discovering the Loch Ness Monster by sitting at her house on the other side of the world than any other researchers before. How did she do it? According to a report on Mirror.com, she simply looked through Google Earth images until she found it. This was back in 2018, and there still has not been verifiable proof of the beast's existence since then. However, this Google Earth sighting was indeed accepted as the ninth official Nessie sighting of 2018 by the official Loch Ness Monster Sightings Register. Did you know that there was an official register of those? I sure didn't. The American woman located the beast near the Loch Ness Highland Resort in Fort Augustus, and it looks shockingly like other images found of the monster. You can examine the image and see a skinny neck, a sort of hump, and the rest is submerged underwater. Could this really be the elusive Loch Ness Monster? Who knows? Number 7. Giant Sea Worm One of the most bizarre Google Earth sightings happened off the coast of New Zealand. This was back in 2014, and the monster in question was spotted at Oak Bay in the far north of the country. There's very obviously a wake in the photograph that could not have been made by any boat because there are none in the area. However, there is what appears to be a giant worm. The creature looks like a very long snake slithering beneath the water. It is definitely not a shark, and there is no possible way it could be a whale. Judging by the photo, it appears to be some kind of underwater serpent. There are no logical explanations for what this thing is exactly. This particular area of the bay is home to lots of undergrowth and plant life, and so there is speculation that something large and strange could be living at the bottom of the bay that no one has ever seen. According to the engineer who actually spotted this anomaly on Google Earth, they believe that whatever caused the wake in the photograph would be at least 45 feet long. Although from here, I can tell you, it looks much larger. It could be that we are only seeing the slight shadow of a much larger beast, and that its head was what made the wake. Is this a giant sea worm? And now for number 6, but first, be sure to subscribe and post in the comments what you think it is. Number 6. Dinosaur in Texas In Dallas, Texas, somebody spotted a marauding dinosaur on the Google Maps Street View. This is a pretty disturbing discovery, and it's a little strange that nobody is talking about it. It seems like it should be national news. There is very clearly in this Google Earth image a Tyrannosaurus Rex simply strolling along the sidewalk. It looks to be about 7 or 8 feet tall, and it actually looks to be heading directly into somebody's shop. 
There did not appear to be any people in the image, so it's safe to say nobody was hurt. But who knows what could happen if this terrifying dinosaur isn't captured soon? Of course, this one is just a joke. The image is of a Tyrannosaurus Rex and it was found on Google Maps, but it's actually a model of a dinosaur. I'm just having a little fun, but I don't think there are any prehistoric monsters roaming around in Dallas. As cool as that would be, science hasn't reached to the point yet where Jurassic Park goes from fiction to reality. Still, this would make a fun excursion on your next trip to Texas, trying to find this lifelike statue. Number 5. Canadian Bigfoot There is some serious debate over whether the legendary Bigfoot monster is indeed living in the Canadian wilderness, or if Bigfoot is actually American. However, we may have the answer to this age-old question. A recent sighting on Google Earth put Bigfoot, also known as the Sasquatch, running alongside the Trans-Canada Highway in the province of British Columbia. For anyone who doesn't know, the Trans-Canada Highway is the ultra-long road that crosses Canada, and it is no surprise that Bigfoot is clearly seen in an image from Google Earth just wandering along the side of the road. While this kind of exposure is normally reserved for bears, moose, and other large hairy beasts, it seems that Google has finally caught an image of Bigfoot himself strolling down the highway. Some people claim it's not actually Bigfoot, but it's actually just a tree stump. Boring. But probably it's more likely, to be honest. The truth is that it's very difficult for me to know for sure. And so, that leaves it up to you guys to decide if this picture really is a secret snapshot of Bigfoot or not. Number 4. Termite Hives While termites might not be as scary as sea monsters or sasquatches, they're still creatures. A massive discovery was recently made on Google Earth, in which a massive deposit of termite mounds believed to be roughly 4,000 years old were sighted in a remote part of a Brazilian rainforest. According to an article by USA Today, for the termites to make these millions of mounds, they would have needed to excavate enough soil to build over 4,000 Great Pyramids of Giza. That is a shocking amount of dirt. It is definitely more than you or I could shovel in a lifetime. But termites are tiny and built these huge structures themselves. And even though most of these mounds are completely empty, some of them are still being actively used by termites. According to the researchers, this bizarre discovery is actually the world's most extensive bioengineering effort taken by a single species, even in comparison to other busy insects like ants. The mounds are shaped like cones and some of them are up to 10 feet tall and 30 feet wide. Some people claim the termite mounds can be seen from space, but that is very unlikely. However, they can indeed be seen from Google Earth, so take a look, it's really quite incredible. And there is no arguing its authenticity. This is entirely real and verifiable. Take a trip down there if you don't believe me. Number 3. Megalodon The only thing more terrifying than a shark is a megalodon, which are like super sharks in terms of size and strength. According to most scientists, megalodons have most likely been extinct for an extremely long time. However, a recent image on Google Maps might suggest otherwise. These massive prehistoric animals were kings of the ocean for about 23 million years, and have recently found their place in pop culture and even film, like in the movie The Meg. Keep in mind, these animals went extinct long before human beings were roaming around the planet, and so it is no surprise that everyone thinks the Megalodon truly is gone. However, a Google Earth image from the Cat Island in the Bahamas appears to show a giant shark-like creature swimming off the coast. Could it be a Megalodon, or someone's cruel attempt at a joke? There's a lot of speculation that this image has actually been doctored, but whether or not it's true is tough to say with certainty. As with all the crazy creatures discovered on Google Earth, nobody truly knows the answer. Number 2. Another Loch Ness Monster here we have a second sighting of the legendary Loch Ness Monster on Google Earth. This one dates back over a decade to 2009. In the image we can clearly see some kind of foreign object floating through the water of the loch. And while a lot of people are claiming this is the real Loch Ness Monster, it looks to me more like a drowned alien. There isn't much about it that looks like a serpent, but of course, there are a lot of people that call this a real, genuine sighting. Believe it or not, it's actually good that there have been sightings like this on Google Earth, as recent physical sightings have dropped off. Believe it or not, there are actually fears spreading through the community of Loch Ness Monster enthusiasts that climate change might have killed their namesake monster. So, what do you think? Did global warming wipe out Nessie? And if so, what was this bizarre white shape floating through Loch Ness in Scotland back in 2009? Post your thoughts in the comments below and hit subscribe for more fun videos like this one. And now for the number one crazy creature spotted on Google Earth. Number 1. Space Aliens The strangest creature that was allegedly discovered on Google Earth is an alien, or aliens. This is definitely the most impressive conspiracy theory revolving around Google Earth creature sightings, as many people have dismissed this sighting as a chunk of ice rather than real aliens. However, there is no denying the photo from Google Earth really does look like a crashed alien vessel. The image comes from a small island near Antarctica, and you can very clearly see a trail through the ice where it looks like something skimmed across the surface then crashed and got buried beneath the snow. 
Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, it definitely appears to be some sort of crashed vessel to the untrained eye. Now, is this an alien crash? I don't know. Is it proof that alien creatures are roaming around on Earth? It doesn't prove anything, but it does raise a lot of questions. According to live science, the image is nothing more than some disturbed ice. But who really knows? All I can say for sure is the truth is out there, somewhere. Number 10. Turtle. Baby turtles are some of the cutest newborn animals in the world. Just watching a baby turtle struggle out of its shell and into the sand is an emotional roller coaster. Everything from the baby's first awkward steps to its dangerous flights from its nest into the sea is exhilarating. Baby turtles have to go through a gauntlet of dangers just to make it to the water alive. Birds, crabs, raccoons, and even fish are all out to get the newborn turtle from the second it crawls out of the egg. It's a very dangerous first few hours for the tiny turtle, and it doesn't get much easier. Talk about a baptism by fire! When it comes to sea turtles, only an estimated 1 in 1,000 hatchlings ever survives to adulthood. That's a vanishingly low chance, and sadly, almost every baby turtle you see in the wild won't make it to adulthood. This is in part due to predators and in part due to human encroachment on turtle territory, with sea turtles needing to cross highways in some cases just to find the ocean. What do these adorable shelled reptiles eat, I wonder? The turtle hatchlings will eat mollusks, seaweed, jellyfish and even fish eggs. In order for a sea turtle to find its way from the nest to the ocean, hatchlings instinctively use the natural light of the horizon, which is always over the ocean. This allows them to seek the waves safely. However, other lights like from cars, campfires and buildings can confuse newborn turtles and cause them to stray into danger. They really weren't trained to live with humans in their presence. Millions of years of natural selection were upended in just a few thousand by the changes we brought to the world. What do you think? Should humans put more effort towards protecting baby sea turtles? Even without any human intervention, most turtles end up being food for larger animals. Should we create large protected habitats for them to be safer? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. If you haven't already, subscribe to Epic Wildlife to catch more awesome videos about animals. You won't want to miss a single one. Number 9. Panda. Panda cubs are some of the most needy and vulnerable newborns on the planet next to human babies. Panda cubs are born without fur and are completely blind. And just like humans, the limbs of a newborn panda are so frail and weak that they can't even stand on their own two legs. And again, much like humans, baby pandas rely on their mothers for months after birth, needing the mother's warmth, delicious milk and protection. However, baby pandas can and do get accidentally crushed by their giant mothers. How sad is that? What many people don't know is that in the wild, just about half of all pandas give birth to twins. But here is where things get a little crazy. Panda mothers will only raise one cub at a time. So even if she gives birth to twins, she will only take care of one of the babies, abandoning the other to its inevitable fate. How sad is that? The mother just chooses one of her babies to nurture. In fact, looking at them from an evolutionary point of view, it is a little strange that any pandas survive at all. Baby pandas are super fragile, they get sick very easily, and they have a very poor survival rate. Luckily, in breeding centers, about 90% of all panda bears will survive into adulthood. It takes the baby panda about two years until it has grown large enough that it can leave its mother and fend for itself. Under human protection and care, more pandas are living well, even if they are living mostly in zoos and nature reserves. Number 8. Giraffe. There is nothing quite as awkwardly adorable as a newborn giraffe. These are definitely the cutest things you will see on any African safari, and will probably be the highlight of your trip, even over lions and elephants. These awkward, long-necked horses are incredibly cute immediately after birth. Giraffe mothers give birth standing up. The baby giraffe will drop headfirst onto the ground from a height of just about 6 feet or 2 meters, which would be enough to do some serious damage to a baby human. Because of the baby's long drop to earth, the umbilical cord is severed naturally. This helps the baby giraffe get up and start living its life. Baby giraffes can stand up and start walking within 30 minutes after they've been born. That's a lot faster than humans, which can generally take a full year or more before they can really start walking. These are the most remarkable newborn babies in the world. Giraffe babies also have one of the longest gestation periods in the animal world. From conception to birth, human beings take 9 months, while giraffes take 15 months. That's almost double the time most animals are pregnant. Rhinos share a similar gestation period of between 15 and 16 months, while elephants hold the record with 22 months of pregnancy. That's a long time to be pregnant. But of course, the bigger the animal, the longer it takes to develop, most of the time. Number 7. Koala. Koala bear babies are the best. 
From the moment of conception, it only takes 35 days before a baby koala is born. Newborn koalas are actually known as joeys. They are extremely small, only about one inch or two centimeters long, and weigh less than one gram. In fact, a baby koala bear looks like nothing more than a pink jelly bean. It is totally hairless, completely blind, and it doesn't even have any ears. However, the baby koala does have a very good sense of smell and touch, as well as strong forelimbs and claws. Koalas are marsupials, like kangaroos and wallabies. Marsupials are a weird type of animal. They give birth to babies that are barely even alive, but then the tiny infants ride around in a pouch for several months, almost like a second pregnancy, while they develop. For the first six to seven months of a joey's life, it remains entirely in its mother's pouch, suckling milk like a little baby. During this time, the baby koala bear gradually develops eyes, ears, and fur. It grows from the small pink jelly bean into a little bear baby. Then, after about 22 to 30 weeks, the koala bear can be seen riding around on its mother's back, no longer hiding in the safety of its pouch. Number 6. Deer. It's hard to find anything more adorable than a newborn baby deer. Newborn deer are docile, cute, and speckled with little white dots. However, anyone who lives in an area populated by lots of deer should keep a few things in mind before ever approaching a baby fawn that they might find lying in the grass in the wilderness. This is a very common occurrence, where people stumble upon a newborn deer lying in the grass apparently helpless and stranded. Many people believe the best thing to do when they find a newborn deer is to take it away and try to save it. However, you are actually dooming the deer for life. According to professional wildlife rehabilitators, mother deer usually leave their babies for around 12 hours a day to go and forage for food. This is because baby fawns are too weak to keep up with their mothers. And so, they just kind of lounge in a chunk of grass until she comes back. However, people sometimes come along and scoop the deer up to take it home. By doing this, people actually put the newborn baby in grave danger. Its mother will be gone and it won't survive without her. This is a huge problem that wildlife rescuers are trying to teach people not to do. If you see a baby deer in the grass, just leave it alone and don't touch it. Its mother will probably be back very soon. Number 5. Chameleon. Baby chameleons are absolutely out of this world. These newborn reptiles are incredibly fragile, super clumsy, and more than comical. Looking at their googly eyes and tiny bodies, it really makes you appreciate how precarious life really is. As soon as a baby chameleon is hatched from its egg, it begins walking. This is because predators are everywhere in the wild and their instincts immediately tell them to get moving. What's really interesting about little baby chameleons is that their mother won't care for them. Their mother lays eggs in the dirt, covers them up with some more dirt, then walks away and never looks back. This protects them from predators while she moves on to live the rest of her life. That may sound a little sad, but they know everything they need to know to survive from instinct, so it's not that bad. Baby chameleons are forced to crawl their way to the surface after hatching. When it comes to baby chameleons born in captivity, it's very important that they are not left in a cage with adult chameleons, as these reptiles are savage cannibals and will eat the young. In the wild, chameleon newborns crack out of their eggs and begin scurrying upwards. They need the protection afforded to them by trees and bushes, and after a few days they begin to hunt small prey like fruit flies and pinhead crickets. Number 4. Crocodile. For such terrifying monsters, crocodile mothers are actually very good parents. They are gentle even though they are fearsome, and they really do provide quality assistance for their little newborn crocodile babies. When you look at a baby crocodile, there is absolutely nothing dangerous that comes to mind. Baby crocodiles don't look anything like the terrifying beasts that their parents are. For starters, newborn crocs are tiny, no more than about 7 to 10 inches long, or 15 to 25 centimeters. They are typically born in huge clutches of eggs, having anywhere between 10 and 60 siblings. The most adorable thing about baby crocodiles is when they're transported inside their mother's mouth. When the crocodile babies are ready to hatch, they begin to chirp. The mother crocodile picks up on it, swims over, digs up the nest, and then carries her little newborn crocs in her mouth to the water where she can look over them. And don't worry, the baby crocodiles are perfectly safe inside their mother's mouth. Her instincts prevent her from closing her jaws and accidentally having her own babies for breakfast. Wild, right? The animal kingdom is just full of weird facts like that, because life on Earth is just so diverse. Number 3. Hippo. Looking at a newborn hippopotamus, the first thing that comes to mind is a child's bath toy. Baby hippopotamuses don't even look real. They are pudgy, have short and stubby legs, they have an almost coy smile, and their little tiny ears are absolutely adorable. They are basically small and squished versions of their parents. But boy are they fat. A baby hippopotamus will weigh between 50 and 100 pounds as a newborn, that's between 20 to 40 kilograms. They need to nurse from their mothers for about 8 months. But don't worry, 
Soon enough, the pudgy baby hippo will grow into a 3,000 pound or 1,400 kilogram monster ready to trample humans and bully crocodiles. Even though the baby hippo will spend a lot of its time underwater, it can't actually swim. A lot of people don't know that even adult hippopotamuses have a hard time swimming. They actually float or walk along shallow areas where they don't have to try to swim. This is why it's so funny to watch baby hippos flounder about in the water when they are newly born. And while mother hippopotamuses will protect their babies, grown males will try to eat them. Male hippos don't typically attack when on land, but they will often go after the baby hippos underwater and try to eliminate them. The animal kingdom is definitely a ruthless and violent place. Why do you think so many of these animals eat members of their own species? It just seems weird, but nature has a way of ordering these things. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Number 2. Hedgehog Sidestepping away from fat newborn hippos, here are some wildly adorable baby hedgehogs. These are some of the strangest looking newborns you can find. They look like tiny red tadpoles when they're born, and even after about 10 hours they still just look like slimy pink grubs. However, after about a day, you really start to see their white, pointy Sonic the Hedgehog spikes sticking out of their backs. And by day 7, they start to look like miniature albino hedgehogs with no eyes and pink faces. Hedgehog babies are basically blobs. They don't do anything, and they look like shrunken tongues. They mostly sit around and peep, hiding in their nest and waiting for their face to stop being so wrinkly. The baby hedgehogs will grow and grow until their quills finally begin to harden and they start to get darker and less tongue-like. These are definitely some of the most interesting newborns to watch grow up in your cage at home. Number 1. Dolphin Baby dolphins don't even look real. They look like grey salamanders without any arms or legs. Still, they are fascinating animals. Unlike most wild creatures, dolphins only give birth to a single baby. They even do it at roughly the same frequency as humans, giving birth to one baby every three years or so depending on the individual dolphin. Another unusual trait dolphins share with humans is that the babies also have belly buttons. Not many animals have these, but dolphins and humans share them. When the newborn dolphin is born, the umbilical cord breaks away and the dolphin is left with a belly button. Dolphin newborns are one of the few animals who drink their mother's milk for up to three years. The milk from a mother dolphin is even richer than human milk or cow milk. This is what helps dolphin babies grow quickly. They begin hunting at about four months old, but continue drinking mother's milk for three years. Dolphin babies even stay with their mothers until around 10 years old, which is quite a bit longer than most animals. Dolphins are smart. They know that mum knows best. Number 10. Dolphins in Egypt In the Red Sea Coral Lagoon off of the coast of Egypt, you can swim with wild dolphins. While you can swim with dolphins in many parts of the world, including Hawaii, Florida, Georgia and Australia, this place is also a famous place to do it. Although when swimming with wild dolphins, it is always good to go with someone who understands their behaviour. There are different kinds of dolphin, but people usually mean bottlenose dolphins, famous for their friendly disposition and smiling faces. Sharm El Sheikh is one of the best destinations in the world if you want to swim with dolphins. It is a large resort city especially popular with European tourists, and of course scuba divers. Here you can visit the Dolphinarium of Sharm El Sheikh, which offers a tank-based, controlled, swim with dolphins program. The other is to encounter wild dolphins in the open ocean while snorkeling or diving. When an encounter goes well, the dolphins are very curious and will get up close and personal to check you out. They apparently hate bubbles from scuba gear, as well as loud splashing and yelling, so it's better to get into the water as quietly as possible and snorkel or stay near the surface. Also, you aren't supposed to touch them no matter how much you might want to give it a big hug. They might like hanging out now and then, but they still enjoy their space. If you annoy them, they will just leave. Dolphins are pretty lovable creatures, but you shouldn't underestimate them either. They can get to between 10 and 14 feet long, weighing around 1100 pounds. So if you want to swim with them, make sure that you're prepared, because running into one can be an intimidating experience, as they will sometimes get nose to nose with you, but it's most likely that they are just curious about you. If you are not ready to dive with them, then maybe you should try the Dolphinarium first, which is a controlled tank environment where you can also watch an impressive stunt show. But if you think you are ready to dive in the middle of a wild dolphin habitat, pack your dive gear and go for a swim, quietly. Quietly. Number 9. Leopard Sharks in La Jolla Off the shores of La Jolla, California, you can swim with the sharks. Leopard sharks, that is. You might think that such an idea is verifiably nuts. Who in their right mind would be willing to swim with some of the scariest, deadliest creatures on the planet? I would. Plus, leopard sharks are actually pretty tame and harmless to people. In 1955, there was a record of a leopard shark getting up close and personal with the diver due to a nosebleed. 
But never fear, this diver returned to land without any injuries, maybe just a little scared. These sharks are easily recognized by their dark brown spots that resemble a leopard. If you come to La Jolla during the warm summer months, you'll find that a lot of leopard sharks have assembled in the area for mating season. They generally hang around from June to October. You're almost certain to come into contact with some of them, even though they can be a little skittish. But that's pretty much all you have to worry about. So, if you want to tell everyone you've swum with sharks before, you should take a trip to La Jolla. It has also been recognized as one of the top 10 places in the world for snorkeling, so it is definitely worth the trip regardless. Have you swum or would you ever swim with a shark? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 8. Sperm Whales in Dominica In the Caribbean Sea right off the shore of the island country of Dominica, you can swim with humongous sperm whales. These are some of the biggest whales in the world. They've been recorded as reaching lengths up to 59 feet and the biggest ones tip the scales at 45 tons. They're also the animal with the biggest brain in the world. They are the largest toothed whale and the largest toothed predator in the world. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can see these animals for yourself on an incredible scuba journey. Dominica is one of the few places on Earth where there is a well-established population of sperm whales just offshore, and the only one where they remain year-round. Oftentimes, you can even see them from the island itself. Around the island, there are large bays where around 300 whales come to feed. The rules are to never get in the way of a mother and her calf, and swim along with the pod, not towards it. If you are lucky, one will come and check you out. Your best bet is to travel to Dominica from November to March because that's when you'll have the best chance of seeing one. After that, there are a few companies that will take you out into the ocean where you can enjoy a swim with them. This activity is highly regulated and licenses for up to six people cost $3,000 per day or almost $9,000 for seven days with only 10 granted every year. This is to protect the whales in their habitat as too much activity might scare the whales away. Number seven. Penguins in South Africa A mere 40 mile drive from Cape Town, South Africa, you can hang out and swim with penguins. You might have thought that the only way you'd ever get to see a penguin was on an Arctic expedition, but on Boulder Beach, you can experience what you thought was impossible. Boulder Beach is in the Table Mountain National Park, which contains many breathtaking sights, but it is most known for being one of the small numbers of places that you can come face to face with penguins. The group of penguins is protected by park guidelines, so you'll need to pay to enter. They are, without a doubt, adorable, but that doesn't mean that they're entirely friendly. In fact, park officials suggest that you should keep a little distance and try not to feed them for your safety and theirs. They have a sharp beak and they won't hesitate to use it if they feel threatened. The endangered birds are native to South Africa and Namibia, and the penguins roam freely. In the winter, you might even catch a glimpse of humpback whales and southern right whales. Fun fact, the colony of penguins at Boulder Beach Colony was started by just a single breeding pair. Other African penguins started coming and this site grew. If that's too far away, you can also swim with the penguins in Tanganyika Park in Kansas, which is one of the few places in the US that will let you swim in a pool with them. Number 6. Sea Turtles in Akumal In Akumal, Mexico, you can swim with a group of gigantic, slow-moving sea turtles. Akumal is well known as a snorkeling haven, and Akumal is Maya for Place of the Turtle. The bay where you will go swimming with the turtles is surrounded by a big reef, so the area is much calmer. The calm waters help to keep the area clear and you can get quite close to the turtles. People who have gone say that seeing the turtles is really amazing, watching them as they come up for air, projecting grace and strength. When you swim with the turtles in Akumal, you're most likely going to spot loggerhead and green sea turtles. Loggerheads can get big, around 3.5 feet in length or 1.1 meters, and weigh up to 375 pounds, that's 170 kilograms. Green sea turtles are one of the largest sea turtles, measuring up to 5 feet long and weighing up to 700 pounds, or 318 kilograms. Unlike most sea turtles, green turtles are herbivorous, feeding on seagrass and algae. If you have your snorkel gear, then you can swim with them entirely for free once you arrive. Otherwise, just rent some scuba gear and you're bound to catch sight of a turtle whenever you're far enough out into the water. So just dive down and enjoy what nature has to offer. Number 5. Seals in Land's End if you're interested in a spirited excursion with some fun-loving animals, then swimming with the seals in Land's End, UK is probably the place for you. Seals are lovely creatures, and there are many different kinds of them. They can grow up to 20 feet or 6 meters long and weigh up to around 4.5 tons. But don't worry, you're not part of their diet. Instead, they're more likely to see you as a playmate if you decide to swim in their waters. They've been known to hang around those whose company they enjoy. They aren't very shy about touching you either. They'll come up to you and gnaw on your scuba flippers or even touch your nose with theirs. But be careful, that doesn't mean you should necessarily touch them. 
You can visit them for yourself off the coast of Cornwall at an area known as Land's End all year round, although your best bet is to arrive somewhere between May and October. There are other places to swim with seals around the world, but Cornwall is notable for the clarity of its water, so you'll be able to see that they're as excited to see you as you are to see them. How about you? Have you had a chance to see these friendly seals? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Jellyfish in Palau On the outskirts of the island country of Palau, you can swim with thousands of jellyfish. Locals refer to the lake where they are located as Onjimal de Katao, Jellyfish Lake, or just Jellyfish Lake. There are two kinds of species of jellyfish that live there, golden jellyfish and moon jellyfish, named for their distinctive coloration schemes. How exactly did so many jellyfish arrive in this lake? Well, scientists think that around 8 million of them were trapped there when the ice age ended and continued to evolve. Inside of the lake, there are hundreds of thousands of jellyfish. You can be surrounded by them. Regrettably, there's no scuba diving allowed because the bottom of the lake is very sulfuric, but you can still swim with them to your heart's content, following them as they amble from one side of the lake to the next. And there's absolutely no reason to be scared of these guys. They don't even sting. The lake was closed to the public for a few years when jellyfish numbers started to dwindle due to an extreme drought, although the good news is that officials believe they have made a full recovery. Number 3. Manta Rays in the Great Barrier Reef If you ever get to visit Australia's Great Barrier Reef, make sure to look into a dive with the manta rays. It's bound to be one of the most memorable experiences you can ever have. The reef itself is one of the world's most magnificent natural wonders. It's a coral reef made up of 2,900 tiny reefs that has over 150 miles worth of swimming territory. Along the way, there are tons of underwater flora and fauna to explore. Corals, turtles, fish, you name it. And of course, manta rays. Although the manta rays that live in the Great Barrier Reef can be up to 22 feet long, the largest ones in the world have grown to around 29 feet long. That's over 9 meters. You can see these for yourself by venturing to Lady Elliot Island in May and June, which is Australia's winter. People estimate that during these months, you'll be able to swim with around 100 manta rays, which have traveled 300 miles to reach their destination. While you're there, you're sure to see all of the other amazing wildlife that congregates at the reef. And now for number two, but first, have you ever visited the Great Barrier Reef? Let me know in the comments below. Number two, manatees in Crystal River. In Homosassa, Florida, the local Crystal River is home to the largest population of manatees in the world during the winter. In fact, it's the only US location where you can swim with the manatees yourself. Due to recent conservation efforts, manatees have become less endangered over the years. That's good news because they're incredible and friendly creatures. They can weigh up to 1300 pounds, that's 590 kilograms, and grow up to 13 feet long. So swimming up close to one of them would surely astound. Given the large population that congregates in the river during the winter months, if you do decide to dive, chances are that you'll be able to see them up close and personal. Once again, it's good to go with professionals that understand manatee behavior. Before the dive, you'll be taught how to interact with the manatees to not scare them away. Local tour guides refer to this as manatee manners. And even though wintertime might not sound like a great idea to get into the water, it's pretty warm and clear, so you're guaranteed to have an excellent viewing experience. Number 1. Whale Sharks in Belize In southern Belize, you can swim with whale sharks, the biggest fish in the sea. That might seem like an intimidating prospect, given how big whale sharks can get. Oftentimes, they can grow to be upwards of 40 feet long, as long as a school bus, and weigh up to an astounding 20 or more tons. That might make you think that if you were to swim in their territory, it wouldn't end well for you. However, as it turns out, they're extremely docile and majestic creatures, and swimming with them must actually be quite a peaceful and incredible experience. Between March and June, whale sharks pass through a protected marine area in Belize. This coincides with the spawning season of snapper and grouper, and whale sharks love their eggs. You can book a tour that will take you about 26 miles off the coast to Gladden Spit. Like with many tours though, you aren't guaranteed to see a whale shark. If you do manage to swim with one, it will be a memory you'll cherish for a lifetime. Just be careful not to accidentally get hit by their tail. Number 9. Barbary Lion Barbary lions, also known as Atlas lions, are the biggest subspecies of lion currently existing in the world. And we're not talking about ligers. These are legitimate lions, and they actually look quite similar to the lions from Disney's The Lion King. Barbary lions have been extinct for quite some time in the wild, but they are still being kept alive in captivity. In 2019, a pair of Barbary lion cubs were born in a zoo in the Czech Republic. This is outstanding because there are really not many of these lions left. They went extinct in the wild back in the 1960s, 
and there are fewer than 100 still alive in captivity. You can typically tell an adult male Barbary lion because he is absolutely massive. A typical male weighs about 500 pounds or 230 kilograms and has an extra dark mane. These lions used to roam all the way across northern Africa, from Egypt to Morocco, and if you know anything about the region, that it is an extremely hot and sandy place. It's no wonder they all went extinct. But hey, here's an interesting fact. Barbary lions were used in Roman times to fight against gladiators in the Colosseum, and unfortunately, hunting did contribute to their ultimate extinction. Number 8. Black Lion You may have seen images circulating recently online of black lions. These lions are standing in the Sahara looking all majestic and beautiful, and they do look extremely real. However, the sad truth is that the black lion is a myth. Every last image online that you see of a black lion is fake. Black lions absolutely do not exist, and every image you see is a hoax. I hate to be the one to break it to you, but there is no black lion roaming the wilderness. The white lions are 100% real, but the black lions are not. Although theoretically a black lion could exist, no sightings of such an animal have been documented. A blog by Sarah Hartwell reports that in 2008, several black lions were apparently seen roaming the streets near Mpumalanga, South Africa, but government officials didn't find any evidence to confirm these rumours. They believe that people possibly mistook the dark brown spots for black as it was night time. The closest thing to a black lion that currently exists is the Ethiopian lion, which boasts a very impressive black mane. In order for any lion to be completely black, it would need to suffer from a condition known as melanism, which involves an abnormal increase in dark pigmentation. This is what accounts for some animals being completely black. Some examples of these animals are squirrels, leopards, jaguars, wolves and panthers. A super cool fact is that the black panther is actually a normal leopard, like those in South America, except that when it is suffering from melania, it has more pigmentation and is therefore black. And now for one of the most majestic creatures on the planet. But first, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what your favourite lion is in the comments below. Number 7. White Lion Contrary to popular belief, the white lion is not actually an albino. Neither does the white lion have bleached hair. Instead, the white lion is an extraordinarily unique animal, and something of an anomaly in the animal kingdom. White lions are also under threat of extinction. Unfortunately, they have been technically extinct in the wild for almost 15 years. There is an ongoing battle to ensure the white lions remain in nature. The actual reason for these lions being white is something called leucism. It is a rare mutation in their genes that causes them to have a coat of fur that is anywhere from white to blonde rather than the brownish yellow that we associate with normal lions. If these lions were albinos, it would be a lack of skin pigmentation that makes them white, but this is actually just a mutation that causes their fur to have a different colour. This majestic lion was almost completely exterminated from nature due to trophy hunting. These lions began to be raised in captivity in zoos in the area. It was not only for this reason that the lions were kept in confinement, but it was also ignorance. Conservationists at the time thought that white lions were inferior to other lions and that their appearance could affect their survival in the wild. However, there is no evidence to prove this. The white lions are so strong and they hunt just like their lion brothers. It is even believed that their white fur helps them to catch their prey, as its unusual colour confuses their victims. Definitely it makes them one of the most unique subspecies of lion in the world. If you are anxious to see these beautiful creatures, don't hesitate to visit the Timbavati Game Reserve. Number 6. Liger Hybrid a lot of people don't know that ligers are real animals, but these are not like mythical chimeras, part lion, part snake and part goat. Ligers are the direct result of a male lion breeding with a female tiger. The opposite of a lion is actually known as a tigon, the result of a male tiger mating with a female lion. Strangely enough, both a liger and a tigon will possess features from both parents, making them each incredibly unique. Ligers have a tendency to be larger and heavier than either of their parents. Biologists believe that the large size of the liger is due to a peculiar absence of growth-limiting genes. This means that they are not limited to how large they can grow. A typical liger can grow to be roughly 10.8 feet or 3 meters in length and over 900 pounds, that's 410 kilograms. However, there have been reports of ligers that weigh over 2200 pounds, that's over 1 ton, though these are unconfirmed. As you can probably imagine, there are no ligers found in the wild. Lions and tigers can indeed mate, but there is far too much geography that separates them across the world. This is why all known ligers are from breeding in captivity. Despite this, some animal rights organisations see this practice as unethical, as these species often acquire birth defects. In addition, they have interaction problems, since their behaviour is a mixture of both species rather than just one. 
Number five, Hercules. And continuing with the Magnificent Ligers, there is a particular kitten that has the title of the biggest living cat according to the Guinness World Records. His name is Hercules. Thanks to his unique genes, he is 131 inches or three and a half meters long. Hercules is incredibly large. He weighs nearly 1,000 pounds, that's 450 kilograms, and eats roughly 30 pounds or 14 kilograms of meat a day. Hercules also has a brother named Sinbad. Though Hercules is the biggest, his current location is in Myrtle Beach in the United States. Hercules actually belongs to Doc Antle, who you may remember from the hit show Tiger King. And while Hercules is named the largest living cat in the world, he looks pretty for such an incredible beast. You can see photos of this massive liger being bottle fed quite constantly. Hercules is just another example of how large these animals can grow. Ligers can not only grow to be twice the size of their parents, but they also grow to be about 100 times larger than a normal house cat. Now that is one massive kitty. Now for number four, but first, tell me in the comments below, what do you think about these great hybrids? And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Number four, Cizanani. Cizanani is one of the most unique lions on the planet. Cizanani was a long-time resident of the Manyaleti Game Reserve in the Greater Kruger National Park in South Africa. He was known as a true survivor according to National Geographic and was the most famous lion in all of South Africa. He was born in early 2007 into a pride with roughly 20 other young. And from his birth, Cizanani was an immediate alpha. Attacks on the other herds during 2008 devastated their herd. Many cubs were victims of the attack, as were some adult lionesses. The pride was fragmented and Cizanani and his brother were the only survivors. The first time the brothers were seen together on the Manuelletti was in mid-2012. Cizanani's brother had a very serious hip injury that he sustained for a long time, possibly with Cizanani's help. This is where Cizanani earned his name, which means working together. He was known for disappearing out into the wild for extremely long periods of time, usually in which people would assume he had died, then randomly return after his wanders and lay claim to entire areas as the leader of the pride. This lion was so tough that he even had more than one region. He would fluctuate between homes in different areas of the park and in different regions of South Africa to mate with different females, be the boss of different herds, and just be a general tough guy. He was something of an anomaly in how tough he was, going so far as to roam on his own, and even take down fully grown buffalo all by himself. Unfortunately, Cizanani suffered a hip injury and perished in October of 2017, but he had a solid 10 years of owning the deserts of South Africa. This is definitely a unique lion. Number three, Cape Lion. Cape lions were once some of the most fearsome felines on the planet. They lived on the opposite side of Africa from the Barbary lions, roaming far in the south of South Africa. In fact, this is why they are called Cape lions, since they originated from the Cape of Good Hope. While they no longer exist, as they were sadly hunted and captured to extinction in the 1800s, they were once a very proud and unique race of lions. They are very distinct because of their dark, almost black mane. Their mane also grows longer down their front and beneath their belly, unlike many other types of lions. It's almost like they have a blanket on their belly. The Burnaby lion is generally considered the largest natural lion, but the Cape lion is a close second. There have been encounters with Cape lions before their extinction when males were found to be around 600 pounds, 280 kilograms, which is a significant weight. And if you were wondering why these lions had darker and longer manes, researchers actually believe that the color of a lion's mane is generally influenced by the climate. And so, in places where it is cool and less sunny, manes typically grow darker and longer. If you think lions can only live in the scorching heat of a desert, you're quite wrong. If you want to know more about this species, you can visit some museums that keep skulls and stuffed replicas. Some of these museums are the Natural History Museum in London, the Zoological Museum in Amsterdam, and the Natural History Museum in Paris. So, if you ever visit any of these cities, don't hesitate to stop by. Number two, Ethiopian lion. Ethiopia is one of the most amazing countries on earth. It is home to the Ethiopian lion, which is one of the world's rarest and most unique lions. Why? As recently as 2016, an entire population of Ethiopian lions was discovered in a national park. There are now an estimated 100 to 200 Ethiopian lions living in the northwest of the country, very near to the Sudanese border. In all likelihood, these lions managed to stay alive because of the extreme isolation of the area. Lions may seem abundant because of their frequent appearances in documentaries, but the reality is different. Since 1980, global lion populations are thought to have declined by up to 75%, meaning that there are only about 20,000 of these cats left in the wild. The lions of Ethiopia in particular are intriguing because of their remoteness. It's a three-day journey from civilization to where the lions are. However, this doesn't protect them. 
Shepherds travel to this area every year to make way for their livestock, and this could put these felines in big trouble. Male Ethiopian lions are not so large or heavy as other lions, but they have a distinctively ferocious look, with a bit of blonde hair around their face and then a massive black mane. Quite intimidating. Number 1. Cave Lion Cave lions are the coolest of all lions, and so they have to be number one on the list. You may wonder why he is called the Cave Lion, and no, it was not because he lived there, but because most of his skeletons were found in bear caves. They probably thought it was a good place to hibernate, but it wasn't. Unfortunately, the last of the Eurasian cave lions died about 12,000 years ago, near the end of the last ice age. However, it is still one of the largest lions that ever lived. The only lion larger than the cave lion was the American lion, which is also unfortunately extinct. In fact, if you look at all the extinct lions throughout the past few thousand years, you will find dozens of subspecies. Different types of lions used to roam the earth in the same way different kinds of dogs now roam our streets. In any case, the Eurasian cave lion was still about 10% larger than any modern lion today. We obviously don't have any photos of them, but there have been cave paintings discovered that show what researchers believe are cave lions. They almost look like a wolf and lion hybrid. They usually measured about 7 feet or 2 meters long, not counting the tail, and weighed about 800 pounds, that's 370 kilograms. They had shaggy manes, and they inhabited woodlands and mountains rather than deserts and savannas. Number 10. A real-life direwolf. Yellowstone National Park is known for its natural wonders and incredible wildlife, from grazing deer to wild grey wolves. Wolves were almost completely wiped out throughout most of the US by the early 1900s, but in 1995, Wild wolves were released in Yellowstone to try and help their numbers recover. January the 12th, 2020 was the 25th anniversary since wolves returned to Yellowstone, and it's an amazing success story. These majestic animals are fierce to behold in their natural habitat. Nobody knows this better than a photographer named Siddharth Gandhi, who happened upon a dangerous wild wolf while driving through the Lamar Valley back in the winter of 2017. He reported that he was driving back in the evening when the wolf appeared on the side of the edge of the road. He stopped his car and said it was an amazing experience to see a wild grey wolf so close. I was in awe. What Mr. Gandhi spotted while driving the nighttime road was no ordinary grey wolf. With a black coat of fur and yellow eyes, at first it crosses the street like a possessed beast from the underworld. Gandhi seemed to have stumbled upon a real-life direwolf. The photographer's video shows a four-legged creature trailing along the roadside, looking to be at least 150 pounds of raw muscle. The wolf showed absolutely no fear while it walked from one side of the road to another, totally confident in the photographer's headlights. It was identified as a female named White Dot, from the Prospect Peak Pack that has about 10 members. At first she looks terrifying, but after a little while you could imagine her being friendly. Well, I still wouldn't risk it, would you? After witnessing this impressive beast, the photographer's goal is to showcase wildlife in their natural habitat. He does not use bait to encourage animals to come closer. While animal sightings are fairly common in Yellowstone National Park, spotting such a fearsome wolf is truly incredible. Next time you're at Yellowstone, keep your ears open for the wolf's howl, or perhaps you'll even be lucky enough to see one. Number 9. A snake in an internet cafe. It was a quiet day in Thailand when a small internet cafe was rudely invaded by what appeared to be a massive four foot long snake. A customer was casually opening the door while chatting to his friends when suddenly he felt something on his hand. He tried to shake it off before realizing it was a snake. The snake had been lurking in the corner outside and was just waiting for the right moment. It launched itself at the boy and snapped at him. It probably meant to go after his hand but missed. His reaction was expected, a sudden burst of panic as he jumped across the room and drop kicked another young guy who had been trying to enjoy his paid internet. After a brief kicking frenzy on the floor, the snake let go and retreated to a corner, scaring another two people sitting in their chairs using the internet. Everyone hopped on the chairs to get as far away from it as possible. Luckily, no one was harmed and the snake wasn't one of Thailand's venomous slithery reptiles like their infamous monocle cobra or Siamese viper. It was only a rat snake, apparently looking for food. And while the young man got away with nothing more than a terrific scare, he's definitely going to look twice the next time he opens the door. Number 8. A manta ray seeks human help. Everyone knows Australia has some of the world's most incredible and dangerous wildlife, especially aquatic animals. From jellyfish to sharks, turtles to manta rays, the shores of Australia are teeming with some of Earth's most amazing creatures. An encounter in summer 2019 shows just how close the relationship between man and sea beast can be. While swimming in the area of Ningaloo Bay, Australia, a diver was asked nicely by Freckles, a local manta ray, to help remove a dangerous hook that had pierced beneath its eye. 
The resulting video footage shows a massive white-bellied manta ray opening its wings so that the swimmer can pull out the ugly hook. It is truly incredible to witness the total stillness as the manta ray waits for the man to successfully pull out the hook. The water is clear blue, the manta ray completely open like a pale underwater angel, and the swimmer desperately trying to unhook the alien object from the manta ray's eye. Finally, after a few attempts, the diver removes the hook and the manta ray swims off into the depths. It's astonishing, but there's no doubt it was grateful for the human's help. Sharks have also been known to do this with divers. No matter what you think about these animals, they're clearly smarter than we give them credit for. This underwater encounter proves that much. Have you ever had a crazy encounter with a wild animal? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Number 7. A peak from a humpback whale I never knew that Ireland was the best place to go looking for an incredible encounter with a humpback whale. While boating in the summer of 2019 along the Irish coast near County Kerry, a young boy was stunned to find himself staring directly into the eye of a truly majestic creature of the sea. As if a team of whales swimming around the father and son's small boats was not impressive enough, the whale pokes its entire blue head out of the water and appears to look straight at the young boy. If that's not enough to make you pause in amazement, I don't know what is. Nothing describes the boy's shock quite like how he gapes back at his father in the video. Humpback whales are gentle giants, ranging anywhere from 39 to 52 feet in length and weighing up to 30 metric tons. They aren't necessarily shy, but they don't generally pop out of the water to wink at people either. This boy was truly given the peak of his lifetime at this friendly whale. Number 6. Canadian Grizzlies Have a Disagreement Canada is a land of natural beauty, but also of savage wildlife, and yes, that means bloody encounters between huge grizzly bears. It was in September of 2019 that a woman came across two grizzlies at the side of the road near the border between Canada and Alaska in one of the wildest places in the world. Incredibly enough, she came upon these bears in the middle of a heated argument. In a video posted by the onlooker, two huge male grizzly bears roar and shove each other from one side of the road to another. The brawl is as intense as it gets. Grizzly bears are true giants of the Canadian wilderness, heavy and fiercely territorial when it comes to mating season. You can see the power of these two beasts as they roar and try to take bites out of one another. In fact, the bear's fight is so exciting that a small wolf appears on the side of the road to enjoy the show free of charge. Is the wolf as amazed by this unexpected encounter as the one who's videotaping it? We can only guess. But in any case, the video ends with the victorious bear chasing the other one across the road, likely expelling it forever from the territory. Remember this incredible encounter next time you're in bear country. Number 5. Surprise Silverback Gorilla in Rwanda Getting in the way of a silverback gorilla and making him angry is not what you want to do. Sounds obvious, right? Well, in May of 2017, a group of tourists learned this the hard way. Of course, they wanted to see the gorilla up close, but they were a little too eager. The video uploaded by one of the tourists shows the group in a dense area of jungle in Rwanda. Who comes strolling up the path? A massive silverback gorilla. You can see the tourists in the video turning their backs on the gorilla to not appear challenging or threatening. If one had made the silly move of pulling out their camera or saying hello to the giant ape, this encounter could have gone very differently. As it went, the gorilla simply kept on trucking right through the people, shouldering past them like a pushy pedestrian in a big hurry. The person who uploaded the video called it a once in a lifetime experience and the adrenaline levels must have been through the roof. What do you think? Do you want to trek with gorillas? One thing is for certain, having a full-sized silverback gorilla nonchalantly stroll by you in the middle of the African jungle is one heck of an incredible encounter. Number 4. Panther on the Boardwalk Florida is notorious for gators, ridiculously large snakes, countless miles of wetlands, and some of the hottest weather in the country. But did you know that in recent years there has been a rather unexpected resurgence of panthers? That's right, panthers. You know, pumas. Big cats with big teeth and sharp claws. Well. A lady from Wisconsin was taking a leisurely hike in a Florida nature preserve when she had a run-in with one of these powerful predators. National Geographic reports that encounters with the Florida panther have been increasing as they make a slow comeback, but remember, they were here first. In a video posted by the shocked woman, she was clearly enjoying a nice quiet stroll. Then, the oversized house cat came jumping out of the shadows. The woman continued filming, backed against the railing, then gasped as the feline charged past and kept on down the boardwalk. I think it's safe to say she was given the surprise of a lifetime in this incredible wildlife encounter. As scared as we may be of these majestic felines, it is crucial to remember that they are more afraid of us. And while there are only somewhere around 180 panthers living in Florida, it looks like their numbers are growing. How will the increasing number of panthers impact the local residents of the Sunshine State? Number 3. A Curious Hyena 
Hyenas have become famous from their role in The Lion King, the goofy scoundrels of the African savanna. But did you know that hyenas are actually apex predators? Did you also know that hyenas are not dogs, but are closer genetically to big cats like leopards and tigers? Well, it's true. These incredible animals are surprisingly dangerous, with jaws that can easily crunch through bone. During a 2019 safari in the Masai Mara of Kenya, a tour guide and his group came shockingly close to a curious hyena in the wild. Rather than leap into the safari jeep, the hyena merely approached and sniffed, seeming to say hello to the safari guide. He seemed even more surprised than his guests. Hyenas are typically pack hunters, but the lone hyena was keen on making friends. After a brief interaction, the hyena went back about its business, leaving everyone in the jeep stunned by such a rare and beautiful wildlife encounter. What about you? Would you like a personal greeting from one of these crazy carnivores? Or would you prefer to stay away from the savannah and keep all your fingers intact? Remember, hyenas have been known to attack unsuspecting humans asleep in their territory. Number 2. Giant Squid Off The Coast Of Japan The ocean, that is, the deep ocean, is riddled with the stuff of nightmares. Fish with no eyes and giant teeth, monstrous sharks who can smell blood from far away, and dangerous jellyfish that ensnare and devour prey. But is there really a kraken at the bottom of the sea? Honestly, it's not likely. But the closest thing to a real-life kraken is definitely the giant squid. Back on Christmas Eve 2015, while diving in Toyama Bay near Tokyo, an excited diver filmed a very special squid's first ever viral close-up. While only measuring roughly 12 feet long, the squid still looked imposing. Shaped like an orange torpedo, the squid swam about for a while, followed and filmed by the diver, before retreating out to sea. What makes this wildlife encounter so incredible is that most giant squid are only found once their bodies get washed up on shore or drift close to the ocean's surface. They are one of the most elusive sea creatures, living far beneath the waves. This curious squid was just a baby at 12 feet long, since adults can grow to be at least 40 feet. Some scientists say that the squid can grow to a maximum of 60 feet while living in the darkest depths of the sea. Imagine bumping into one of those on your next snorkeling trip. And now for the number one unbelievable animal encounter in the world. But first, let me ask you something. Which of these animal encounters impresses you the most? Which animal would you want to meet in the wild? And which scares you the most? I look forward to seeing your answers in the comments below. Number one, panda meets horse in Northwest China. There is only one country in the world where you can find wild pandas coming down the road while walking your horse. Of course, it has to be China. A video from 2018 shows a man walking with his horse up a steep mountain trail in the Shanxi province of China, when a panda comes walking down the trail towards them. What follows is one of the most interesting animal encounters on this list. The horse appears to be stunned by the oncoming panda. This makes sense, since it's not often that you'd find horses and pandas frolicking together in the wild. After a brief pause, the horse decides to keep going up the road. Then the panda tries to rush the horse. After a bit of panic and confusion, the panda backs off and the horse decides to eat some nearby grass. Moments later, the panda vanishes up the road. Suffice to say, these two animals probably don't have a future as friends. Seeing as how rare pandas are, the horse and panda meeting is a seriously incredible animal encounter. Number 10. Blue Ringed Octopus the next time you're out for a swim in the ocean and you come upon a tiny little octopus with blue rings all over its body, don't even think about touching it. The blue ringed octopus produces an incredibly potent neurotoxin known as tetrodotoxin, which can cause you some serious harm. According to the Ocean Conservatory, this is the type of neurotoxin that is also found in the infamous pufferfish. The venom is produced by bacteria in the octopus's salivary glands and is more toxic than any venom secreted by a land animal. The octopus typically uses its venom for hunting prey such as crabs and small fish. It pecks its prey with its beak, thereby inserting the venom. And then the octopus uses its beak to pick off little scraps of meat while its victim is still alive and helplessly paralysed. Yeah, this is a pretty brutal octopus. In humans, the bites from the blue ringed octopus can be deadly. The venom will first block the nerve signals throughout your body, causing you to become completely numb. Other symptoms will soon follow, such as nausea, vision loss, and loss of motor skills. In the end, the venom will cause complete muscle paralysis, including the muscles you use to breathe, and you will eventually die. The only way to survive the bites from a blue ringed octopus is if you're put on artificial respiration immediately. Number 9. Deathstalker With a name like Deathstalker, you should already know not to touch it. This tiny little scorpion is also known as the Israeli Desert Scorpion. It's a dull yellow in colour, and can grow to be about 4.5 inches in length, which is pretty small for a scorpion. 
It has a thin tail and lives for around 6 years if nothing eats it. At the end of its long tail is a stinger that is typically coloured black. They can be found roaming around dry desert areas in the north of Africa and throughout the Middle East. They make their homes under stones and inside natural burrows, and they capture their prey by springing out of holes and pinching little animals with their little pinchy pincers. But what makes these Deathstalker scorpions particularly deadly is their poison. The Deathstalker scorpion has the strongest venom out of any scorpion on earth. If you decided to touch one for some silly reason, it would probably sting you, and you would then convulse, slip into paralysis, and eventually die due to heart and respiratory failure. As a side note, you can typically tell how deadly a scorpion is by its size. Scorpions that are really big and have powerful pincers don't generally have deadly toxins, but something as tiny as the Deathstalker with little weak pincers is going to have much stronger poison, and this one does. Have you ever seen one of these? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Cone Snail You wouldn't normally think about touching a snail. Even the snails and slugs in your garden are pretty gross and pretty slimy. You're probably not picking them up and rubbing them on your face. However, if you are a weirdo who likes to play with snails, there is one snail you definitely want to stay away from. It's known as the Cone Snail, and they are the deadliest snail in the world. They harpoon their prey using a tooth-like spear that injects the victim with deadly toxins, paralyzing them instantly. This allows the cone snail to slowly pull the unsuspecting fish or worm inside of its shell so that it can digest it whole. What's really interesting is that after the snail harpoons other animals with its weird tooth, the tooth is then discarded and instantly replaced by a new one. It's like having a gun that never runs out of bullets. It's believed that most cone snails travel with about 20 of these harpoon teeth locked and loaded at all times, but they can continue to make new ones. The deadliest of all 800 different species of cone snails is known as the cigarette snail, which is typically found in the Indo-Pacific region. The reason it's called a cigarette snail is because the toxin it delivers into your bloodstream is so powerful that you only have enough time to finish a single cigarette before you die from its attack. This should be a warning to any shell collector. Watch out for these deadly snails. And now for number 7, but first, let me know if you've ever encountered any of these animals, and what other animals you would like to see in future videos. And be sure to subscribe because we have lots more coming up. Number 7. Boom Slang This one should be pretty self-explanatory. You would have to be a complete nutjob to voluntarily touch a snake. It's estimated that somewhere between 1 million and 5 million people are bitten by snakes each year, with about one-fifth of bites resulting in death. Of course, that number is much lower than it was a few decades ago thanks to antivenoms, and there being less snakes in civilized places, but that doesn't mean you should go around stroking every snake you see, especially not the deadly boomslang snake. Unlike most poisonous snakes, like vipers that have their fangs at the front of their jaw, boomslang snakes have their fangs at the rear of their jaw. This would usually make it very difficult for them to sink their fangs deep into a person, but because the boomslang snake can open its mouth at almost a 180 degree angle when it's biting, it's able to sink its fangs deep into your flesh. And that's when the horrifying venom gets pumped into your veins. The good news is that you're probably not going to run into one of these green and black serpents anytime soon. They don't typically hang out in North America. Number 6. Africanized Bees We're going to do something a little bit different for this one. It's time to talk about killer bees, also known as Africanized honeybees. They have a notorious reputation for being some of the most deadly and aggressive bees on the planet. However, according to a report by CNN, that is absolutely not the case. Killer bees are smaller than normal bees, they have less powerful venom, but they are still pretty aggressive. Yes, killer bees are the angriest bees in the world, but they're not actually going to murder you. At least, it's not likely. Where did killer bees come from? Well, in 1956, a Brazilian scientist imported African bees to South America. These bees eventually escaped, bred with European bees in the wild, and gave birth to a whole new species. And of course, they gradually began to spread. By 1985, they had reached Mexico, and by 2014, killer bees were all over the United States and Canada. Somewhere along the line, the Africanized honeybees became known as killer bees, but they don't actually do much killing. Still, this is a small animal that you don't want to touch. They are aggressive, and if you go poking around their hive, you are going to get a pretty nasty surprise. Unless you have an allergic reaction to bee stings, it will take about 1,000 stings from these bees to kill you. And while typical European bees are not going to come out with that kind of force, Africanized bees will. Over the past 50 years, Africanized honeybees, aka killer bees, have been responsible for several hundred human deaths. Number 5. Tetsi Fly The Tetsi Fly is one of the lesser known pests in the world mainly due to it living primarily in Africa. This is not an insect you want to let crawl around on your skin. The bite from the tetsi fly can be deadly. 
but not for the same reason as mosquitoes or other flies. The tsetse fly is notorious for spreading something known as African sleeping sickness. There are two different types of African sleeping sickness, depending on which region you're in, and it's typically transmitted through the bite of one of these annoying flies. African sleeping sickness can be just as deadly as other diseases, such as malaria, except it takes upwards of two months for the patients to become deceased. If this fly bites you, the first sign of trouble is going to be a big red shanker sore. If you contract the disease, you will quickly begin suffering from a fever, brutal headaches, extreme fatigue, a swollen throat, aching joints, and a skin rash. As the disease persists, you will get progressively more confused, your personality may change, and as the infection invades your central nervous system, even more neurological problems will occur. If left untreated, you will probably die. The lesson of this story is to bring your insect repellents with you on your next trip to Africa. Don't let these flies touch you. Number 4. Brazilian Wandering Spider It should be no surprise that Brazil is home to some of the world's most terrifying small animals. In fact, I could go on and on about a thousand different animals in the Brazilian jungles that you should never touch. But let's keep it simple. Our big no-no of today is the Brazilian wandering spider. It's also known as the banana spider, and it goes by the scientific name Phonutria, which is Greek for murderess. That's because this spider is one of the most venomous on Earth. Its bite can easily kill a human, and even with antivenom you might not be so lucky. In fact, the Guinness Book of World Records has the Brazilian wandering spider named as the most venomous spider on the planet. There are a total of eight species of Brazilian wandering spider, and you can find all of them living in Brazil. There are others found throughout Latin America, all the way from Argentina up to Costa Rica, and you should not touch any of them. Do you know why they also call them banana spiders? It's because these are the sneaky spiders that are sometimes exported to Europe and North America in shipments of bananas. They love living in a big cluster of bananas, so be careful the next time you're at the grocery store shopping for fruits and veggies. Number 3. Rats Rats are universally despised. There is no place on earth where people welcome the presence of rats, especially sewer rats. These horrible little monsters have caused havoc on civilization time after time as the spreaders of disease. And for this reason alone, nobody should ever touch a rat, especially a sewer rat. If you have a clean rat at home in a cage, it probably isn't diseased, but if you find one scrounging through your garbage and decide to try and pet it, you might come down with a bad case of the Black Plague. That's right, these disgusting little rodents were primarily to blame for transmitting the bubonic plague that wiped out almost all of Europe several hundred years ago. This is because of the fleas that live on the rats. The fleas can jump between rats and humans, spreading infection everywhere they go. It's not actually the rat itself that infects people with diseases. It's the bug carried on their fur that transmits typhus, bubonic plague, and so much more. Then you have to worry about the urine and saliva of rats, which can get you sick with a viral infectious disease known as lymphocytic choreomeningitis. This is why it's not a good idea to ever touch a rat. Don't even touch anything that the rat has touched, as a single drop of urine, saliva, or feces can get you so sick that you end up in hospital. If you find rats in your house, you better call an exterminator immediately. Number 2. Feral Cats There is nothing sadder than seeing a poor stray cat meowing in the alley at night. It's just so sad, and it undoubtedly makes you want to go outside, pick up the stray cat, and bring it into your house to cuddle you all day. However, you should stay far away from stray cats, which are often feral. Feral cats are the mangiest of all the felines, and they typically hang out in dumpsters, around abandoned buildings, and in heavily wooded areas. They are almost always full of diseases, just like rats. There is a stiff difference between the fluffy house cat that purrs against your leg and the feral cat screeching from the dumpster at night. To make things worse, feral cats often hang out in something known as a feral cat colony, which is basically a big group of rabbit cats that take over abandoned basements, decaying tenements, sewer systems, and everywhere else full of grossness. And just like rats, any feral cat is able to carry parasites and diseases that can be transmitted to you, a human. You might think petting a stray cat outside is showing it some love, but you'll definitely regret it when a week later you're infected with a horrible disease and sent to hospital. At the very least, you can get ringworm from hanging out with feral cats, and though it's not going to kill you, it's still pretty gross. Number 1. Baby Bears If you don't live in an area heavily populated by bears, you have probably never thought twice about what to do if you stumble upon a baby bear. There is no arguing that bears are some of the most adorable, ferocious beasts still living on our planet. There is nothing cuter than a baby bear rolling through the grass near the side of a hiking trail. But don't you dare approach a baby bear, and don't even think about touching it. If you see a baby bear, chances are 100% that the mama bear is very close by and ready to eat your brains. 
Typically, bears are not aggressive. They will run away or do whatever they can to avoid a fight, and they won't actually eat your brains. But if you get the crazy idea to try and touch a bear's baby, you'll probably see the big one charging out of the woods like a very real beast. Bears can actually run at around 37 miles per hour. Even if you stopped on the side of the road to try and touch some baby bears you saw near the edge of the forest, you probably wouldn't have time to make it back to your car before the mama bear pounced. Have you ever had a run-in with one of these small but deadly animals? Let me know in the comments section. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon for another amazing video.